Hello everyone, it's Mr. Woodward. In a previous video, I showed you this toy car and how it has no steering wheel, and therefore it goes only in a straight line. But that if I wanted to make it turn, I had to provide a force perpendicular to the direction of its motion. And so I used a spring scale, which is really just this springed hook to pull on the car perpendicular to its direction of motion and to cause it to turn. And if that pull continued, I could actually cause the car to turn in a circle like this. We learned that the inward pull caused by the spring scale is called a centripetal force. It's, an, it's a center seeking force and it points this way in this direction, this way in this direction. And when the car is this way, that pull is this way, always towards the center. And so in this demonstration, I wanna set you up for a lab investigation that asks this question, what variables affect that force that's necessary to pull an object into a circle? Okay, what variables affect centripetal force? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this idea of the car spinning around in a circle and we're going to um, turn it into a scientific model. So um, one of the things that might affect the amount of pull that's required to produce the circular path is first of all the mass of the object, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, replace the car with just a bunch of different masses. And I'm gonna start with um, a relatively small mass and I'm gonna hook it up to something that can measure the force, right? And now this mass doesn't have its own ability to move forward, so I'm gonna have to twirl it in a, in a circle. And of course it wants to fly off the spring scale, so I'm gonna to need to secure it into a circular path using a loop. And now I can twirl that mass into a circle, okay? If I wanted to change the mass, I could just replace this with a greater mass. And then I could twirl this one into a circle and try to measure the force required to move it in a circle. And then I could continue to increase the mass. I could even go up to something really, really big and try to twirl it into a circle, right? Well, twirling, twirling it into a circle is difficult to do at a consistent rate. So it's actually easier to use a turntable in a situation like this. Then I can control the rotation a lot more easily. And as I'm controlling that rotation, um, I still need to measure the centripetal force. So what I'm gonna do is as I hook up my mass, I'm going to attach a spring scale um, and actually a large format spring scale through a pulley that will allow me to measure the force, the inward force as the object rotates in a circle and so right. to move around in a circle. So it's gonna kind of move like this, right? So first thing I can do is change the mass. The second thing that I can do in my experiment is I can change the velocity, the rate of rotation, right? So you might say that the force might be different if you're going around this fast compared to this fast. And if the force is different, we would wanna be able to measure that difference, okay? Again, we're gonna hook it up to a, a, a spring scale and actually measure the tension in the, in the string as it's spun around on our turntable at a faster and faster rate. So again, instead of hand spinning it, we will spin it on the turntable and um, right, it'll be connected here and then we'll spin it around at faster and faster rates, holding it towards the center the entire time. So we could change the mass, we could change the velocity, and the third thing that we could change is the radius of the circle. So how would changing the radius of the turn affect the centripetal force? So this would be a very tiny radius. This would be a little bit bigger. And this would be a very large radius. So 
So how does the radius of that circle affect the force necessary to keep it into a circular path? Okay, so we'll be changing the string length longer and longer and longer and measuring the force at each uh, string length, which is the radius, okay? Now, you're going to um, get access to some videos that actually show these different experimental setups on a website called Pivot Interactives, where you'll be able to change the mass, change the velocity of the rotation, and you'll be able to change the radius of the string. And then using the spring scale, that's visible in the video, you'll be able to see, and by the way, the spring scale will move like this, that would be two newtons, four newtons, that'd be four and a half newtons, looking at the spring scale to see the centripetal force at each situation. Good luck.